Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new here, my name is Farrah Lorraine Wynn and um, welcome to my world. So the song that is going out is called Waiting Room. It is my new single that will be dropping this Friday. So if you're watching this on November 12th, um, this Friday, Waiting Room will be available on all digital streaming platforms. My eye masks that I just removed are from Laray Skin. Use the look in the description box below, click the link, um, and use the discount Fair 25 to get something special um, over on my website at LaraySkin.com. So today, November 12th, is actually the day that um, in, 2000, in 2022, I broke my ankle. And... Um, I posted on Instagram, so many of you have seen a glimpse of that already. And I wasn't even planning on making this video, to be completely honest with you, but I, um, I'm i in Memphis right now. I just wrapped up an incredible week with one of my clients. Um, for those who don't know, I'm a publicist. So I work with my clients to just bring exposure to um, their different brand or their products or their services. And we do that in many different ways, but I'm here in Memphis with a client. I've been here since last Monday and I am going to the airport tonight, but I was gonna lay down y'all like I've packed and I've eaten and uh, all these things showered and I was gonna lay down and I just felt like hey you have a little bit of time why not take advantage of it you have the light set up you've got the camera you've got the tripod make the video so this really legitimately was not planned also didn't know I was gonna be dropping the single this Friday until I was writing the notes um, for today's conversation so I'm gonna just dive right in and I'm gonna try to make this as short and sweet as I possibly can um, if you're not a subscriber make sure you subscribe give this video a thumbs up share with somebody you love all right so um, I have my notes here like I said so I'm gonna might be referring back to those occasionally uh, but I want to tell you guys the story about how I broke my ankle in 2000 or 2022 I don't know why I say it like that but in order to get a full understanding of it all, I have to go back a little bit further than that, okay? So I have, let me just pull my iPad. I have this timeline um, of events that I have to kind of characterize here because they play a very important part into understanding the break. And um, it's funny, in college, I wrote a paper called The Break That Healed, but I was talking about my dad breaking his leg back in 2007. And um, it actually healed our family and brought us closer together because of the amount of traveling that he was doing. And, you know, we barely got to see him and things like that. And God really brought us together. Like, you would never know the way all of our relationships are situated now. So, anyways, let's go. There's, like, 15 points. I just, like, bullet pointed them. But let's go back to the beginning, all right? So, um, first and foremost, I grew up in the church. I'm a pastor's kid. Love the Lord with all of my heart and really try to live a devout life, right? So obviously everybody makes a mistake. All have sinned and come short of his glory. But through repentance, faith, and the precious blood of Jesus Christ, every person can have restored fellowship with Christ through salvation. All right? That's our statement of faith. All right, so... Um, grew up just like really loving God and wanting to tell other people about him. I'd invite people to church as young as like second and third grade. Like my mom was like a bus. Like I'm like, okay, these people are coming over after school and they're coming to youth night with us. And then people started trickled into the weekend. We'd start doing events on Saturday and then they come back on Sunday. And so um, I really just had a passion and a love for Christ at a very early age. And if this camera runs out of space, y'all, I'm going to have to switch views. So just bear with me. Um, I hope it doesn't. Anyway, grew up really devout, loving God, not from a religious standpoint, but a real, I hate to say it, but relationship standpoint, because my parents taught me how to love God. You know, they, they would tell us, learn to know God for yourself. And so very early on, I'd read the Bible, loved him. I made a commitment to myself and to God very early on that I was going to save myself until marriage. Um, and I, I kept that promise and I wasn't, you know, trying to do nothing outside of that. Um, but yeah, so fast forward to 2018, I was 23 years old. Um, I had just turned 23 actually meet this guy. We hit it off. We get engaged. And, um, six months after our engagement, we got married. And I say meet this guy loosely because I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. In fact, he's probably watching. So, Hey, <laughs> um, but we got married six months after we got engaged. Um, nine months after our wedding, uh, we found out I was pregnant. And so, 
obviously like anything in life we had our ups and downs everything has its like twists and turns especially growing pains in the infancy of something new and so it was a, it was a lot of like you know trying to figure out um but i was in it you know in it to win it so stuck through we tried to work th through certain things and it got to a point where i was like you know i don't know it just it just ain't it ain't given what it was supposed to give right so in 20 21 um i decided to separate and we got divorced and the divorce was filed the same year um and then finalized a couple months later into the new year of 2022 so now i'm in this position where i'm questioning god right like you knew this was gonna happen why did you let this happen like i saved myself and i did everything right as far as i knew right like i just really thought that once i got married and i started my life that that would be it now I'm a single mom, I'm paying my own bills, never had paid rent before in my entire life until this point. I was responsible for things I never had to be responsible for, <laughs> so it was crazy. And um, I did not like, but I was determined to be a mom and put on my big girl panties, sorry for the term, excuse the expression, um, and take care of my baby. And that's what I did. And so um, now I'm questioning God, right? And I didn't realize that through all of this, bitterness was starting to set in. Like. I was upset with myself and I was upset with God. It wasn't even so much people, it was me and God. And I was always very clear on that. I, I took a lot of the blame simply because I'm like, well, nobody held a gun to your head. Like, you know what I mean? Like I made these decisions, this is my life, this is my journey, this is my portion. But I didn't understand that I was losing my trust in God as a result. I didn't have a clue. So. Again, now I'm single mom, working hard, trying to make it. And I didn't realize that because of my lack of trust in God. I always loved God, don't get me wrong. But I, was, I lost my trust in him at the hand of, um, you know how the Bible says to rightly divide the word of truth, right? I wasn't like rightly dividing my circumstances and what God was showing me. Now, I will go back and say that in 2018, before I ever got married, before I even got engaged, I think, um, I was just having a really emotional day and it's wild because I remember the exact day and, uh, yeah, it was right before, um, he came down and he proposed and I was just having a really emotional day and I was praying. And while I was in prayer, God gave me like this entire outline, um, of, and I still have it to this day in my notes. He gave me this entire outline on what I could expect from the relationship. If us two were to join together, this is what I could expect. And while some of it I wasn't really like into, I was like, hmm. I still was like, well, I love this person, right? So I was like, okay, God, cool. Thank you for your stamp of approval. Let's move it right along. All right, so that was 2018. Fast forward to 2022. Um, and amidst a lot of other stuff, I'm really brushing over a lot just to get to the point and explain the whole ankle story to you guys. But um through all of that, God had revealed to me one day that he said, I didn't give you my stamp of approval. I was giving you, um, what did he say? I was, I was, I was showing you what you'd have to contend with. So sometimes I think we think because God says something about a situation that that's him saying yes. And he wasn't telling me yes. He was saying, if you can handle these things and this is something that you want to take on, then, you know, you have free will, you make that choice. And so God has his good, his acceptable and his perfect will. And I think that was something that he was just like, okay, I'll allow it, you know, um, and I went with it. All right. So um, now, yeah, again, I'm questioning God and I'm upset with him and I'm frustrated and I'm like, this isn't fair. I never thought I'd be on my own. I never thought I'd have to pay my bills this way. Like I was paying bills. Like I'm an entrepreneur. I have been since I graduated college. I graduated at 15, started college at 16. As soon as I graduated, I started my first business. So it's not necessarily that, oh, I don't want to pay bills. I don't want to pay bills. But it wasn't that I didn't want the responsibility of it as much as my idea on what my life would look like at 25 years old was much different than what I was actually seeing. And so I questioned God a lot on that. All right. So summer 2022, my mom prophesies to me in a text. I still have that too. And she says something in there about how God said that um, you were supposed to go left at one point and instead you went right. And it, you, it's important that you turn back before it's too late. And she says that it happened in March. This is what she says. It happened in March. When she's sending me this text, it's June. And if you know anything about my family, and if you don't, I'm about to tell you, my family's very prophetic. Seeing eye prophets, eagle eye prophets, dreamers, vision seers, like... God be showing some stuff, right? 
And she says it happened in March. And so I calculate and I'm like, March. And I'm thinking, what happened? And I'm like, I didn't do nothing in March. I was like, was I not supposed to launch this tour? Because I was on tour with the Elite Society at the time. We did the, the Women in Business meetup. Shout out to all the girlies who have, I've connected with. Uh, from that, We did 10 cities. We had a total of 12. Had to cancel the last two because of my ankle. But um, yeah, so I'm thinking, I'm like, was I not supposed to do this tour, God? I heard you loud and clear tell me you're going on tour. So what did I do wrong, right? I'm really trying to process. That was in the summer. That was June. Fast forward to um, uh, September, or let me say this too. In June, my parents felt led to move to Houston. Got a word from the Lord. And I, at first I was like, all right, I'm down. And then I paused and I was like, no, God, I need to hear from you because I'm the head of my household and I need an answer from you. I can't just be doing what everybody else is doing if I'm the, the, the head of my household, right? So I was like, when I hear you, I'll move. And that's what I told God. This was in June. So fast forward to September, we're doing the Southeast leg of the tour. I had started on the West Coast and we were moving Southeast. And because my family was now in Houston, instead, and they're helping me with my baby, instead of living on the West Coast like I was and then going back and forth to Texas to drop her off and then go where I needed to go, I was like, we might as well come to Houston and stay. And while I leave and come back, at least she can be there. So that's what we did. In September, I'm going to Chicago, New York. We did Dallas, we did Houston. And I was in prayer one day while I was in Houston, get, you know, preparing for these other cities. And the Lord said, start packing your things. It's time to find a call, place to call home. And I was like, wow, I wrote it in my journal and everything. I gotta figure out which prayer journal because I've gone through about four or five since then, which is great. I'm very happy about that. But I just gotta figure out which one it was because I think it is it was left in uh at home when i went back all right so the lord tells me start looking for a place to call home i text my mom i found this really cute condo that i wanted but then here i am i start calculating the expenses of the condo and i wasn't driving at the time simply because i didn't need a car i was never home um so now i'm calculating okay well i'm gonna need a car from here right and then i'm gonna need to move all my stuff from the west coast and all of these different things and i'm like oh this is too much i'm not doing this right so I shut my heart off to the idea of moving. Mind you, we had already called the apartment complex, canceled my lease, all of these things. So I, I fly back to um, Arizona, which is where I was living, to help finish moving some of the other things for the family. I was driving one of the cars down. And on the plane ride there, I am in tears. I am just, uh, just a mess. Cried the entire flight. I think it's like four or five hours maybe three, I don't know. It felt like 10. Cried the entire flight. And I told God, I said, this, this cannot be you and it hurts this bad. Like you're asking me to move. Cause this was the thing I was going home and I was supposed to be packing up my stuff so they can help move it with the next round of, of things that's coming. And I'm crying and I'm like, Lord, this can't be you. So I get home, I get off the plane and I made up my mind, I said, I'm not moving. And so I called the, my mom, she didn't answer. Called the apartment complex, I was like, look, I'm not gonna break my lease, I'm staying here. She says, okay, call my mom, tell her the situation. She's like, like side eyeing me, cause she knows she done heard from God. She's like, all right, okay, this is September. Fast forward, I drive the car back to Houston, now I'm there and I'm trying to figure out, okay, uh, when am I gonna go back home? Cause originally I, I planned to stay through the holidays, right? But I was, I'm just, you know, just thinking like you do, just planning in, in your mind. So then my brother, who also still lives in Arizona, calls and was like, hey, can you come babysit for a couple days? I'll take care of you, da, 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 da. All right, bet. So I go home, Serenity stays with my parents because those are her best friends. And she chews them over me any day. No, I'm just kidding. So I fly home and I'm with my brother. And um, I wanna say, oh, I'm sorry before that happened okay so now we're in october october 30th i went to church the next day i was supposed to be leaving out which was halloween october 31st it was a monday um october 30th i'm in church my brother jay prophesies to me and he tells me that the lord says mind you i'm in church writing that i need to go on a fast and hold on guys i'm telling this story out of sequence two days before this this was thursday my brother calls me asked me to come babysit bet Friday, I tell my sister Angel, when I get home, I need to go on a consecration. I'll probably do like two days. That was Friday. Sunday, I'm in church 
my brother Jay prophesies to me. Mind you, as he's, pro he's getting ready to call my name, I wrote down in my calendar, go the whole three days. So I was going to fast for three whole days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, come off Thursday, which I've never done like a full three day and night. But I heard it sitting in service that I need to do the whole three days. And so Jay prophesies to me and he says, um, again, I have the recording. I have, <laughs> I keep receipts. Um, he says to me that when you go home, you need to fast. And God said, do the whole three days. And so now I'm cracking up because I'm like, okay, God, I hear you. And he, he says all these other things to me and what the, the consecration is going to do for me and all this stuff. And then um, my dad, after we dismiss, my dad, who's our bishop, looks at me and he says, and it's a matter of life and death. And I'm like, oof, better make sure I do that consecration. <laughs> so fast forward Sunday night, I'm packing to leave. I heard the Lord tell me to leave my baby with my parents. I was going to take her originally. I heard the Lord say to leave her, but I, I felt mom guilt and I'm like trying to be super mom. I'm like, no, I got this, blah, blah, blah. So we get to the airport, the same airline that argued me down getting to Houston that I did not need to buy my child a seat because she's a lap child. I get to the airport in Houston going to air back to Arizona. This same airline is telling me you need to buy a seat because your child is not a lap child. And I'm like, hold on a second. On my way here, they laughed in my face because I spent all this money on a ticket for a little child and that she could have rode on my lap. Now, you guys are telling me that just days later, the rules have changed. They argued me, argued me down. My dad had already left. And so now I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to take an Uber because if you know anything about Houston, you know, from where we live, um, Sugarland, the airport is 2000 hours away. So I was like, we're just going to catch an Uber. End up not being able to fly out that day because the Lord did not want me to take my baby girl. And so I'm crying and I'm sad and I'm emotional. We take that hour long Uber back to the house and I leave her suitcase with my mom. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm not taking her. Mind you, I had already started my consecration. And so the next we got a flight out the next day. And oh, and that was the other thing. I was like, well, can I get out tomorrow? They were like, yes, but there's only one seat available. So I couldn't even buy her a seat the next day. I was like, oh. So I leave her with my mom and dad. Felt so sad about that. And I went, because I didn't know when I was coming back. That was the other thing. And I went uh, to the airport, flew home. I'm there babysitting, consecrating. God is revealing all kind of stuff to me. Thank you, Lord. And um, I, just, I just remember the feeling of, of, of the revelation and what he was showing me. Um, so after I get off this consecration... I go right back to the mindset that I was in. And by that, I mean taking matters into my own hands, which mind you, this was the whole thing God was trying to uh, eliminate. Now, after I get off the consecration, I wanna say um, it was November, maybe let's just say ballpark. I have a memory that I would know for sure, but ballpark, it was maybe Sorry, I was getting a call. Okay, ballpark. Let me just stop. 